A career coach with Employment and Employability Institute. Is 2024 a good time to change jobs? The job description says fast-paced environment is a red flag. I've never been to like a formal interview. No way lah, what? Should you quit your job this year? This is your daily catch-up. So if you're thinking of changing careers and wondering what the job market looks like in 2024, we have the perfect person to answer that question. Vivian Ang, a career coach with NTUC's Employment and Employability Institute. Welcome to the show! Welcome! Hello everybody! Vivian! 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 Are we doing that now? <laughs> that's that's <laughs> new, that's new. I think the first time I heard of a career coach was actually when we interviewed, uh, I think the Labour MPs. Mm -hmm. When they were saying all the things that they can do right now, I'm like thinking, A, when I was making my career switch, I think I could have used it, but mm -hmm. I'm not sure how actually. Context is I went from the media industry, I shift all the way to something completely unrelated, healthcare. Mm. Unfortunately, it didn't turn out well. I'm back in the media industry. So Welcome I'm just- back. Welcome back. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> so I'm just wondering like, if I had gone to a career coach when I was like looking for a mm. career switch that time, right? What exactly would that process have looked like? Uh, yeah. When you make an appointment with E2I career coaches, right? You will have about 45 minutes to one hour for one session. Wow. Then during that, that session, uh, the coach will work with you in terms of uh, identifying the goal that you wanted to uh, accomplish and then also assess the reality that uh, your situation in, uh, reality of the situation you are in right now and also thinks of uh, different uh, options that may be available for you and also work on certain plans that you can bring yourself forward. I think one of my biggest concerns when making a career switch, right, is mm. like, the lack of skills that I have in the industry. I think mm. like, mm. who is this guy from the media industry who probably expects a higher than fresh grad pay, right? Mm. But then your skills wise seems to be anyone who is within the industry and wants to move to that company, right? They are already better than me. Or even like a fresh grad who comes out from studying that, that kind of field, that field yeah, right? Yeah. Then they are already outperforming me. So I'm, I was always very concerned about how do I kind of f fill in that skill gap? There are actually a lot of national initiatives and programs in place, like the uh, career conversion programs, which is one of it, whereby they actually guide and assist individuals without that skills in that <laughs> industry to do a switch. There's also career trial in place, whereby you can actually trial jobs up to three months to do to see whether you have liking to the role or not. Huh, I yeah. can try jobs <laughs> for three months for fun. That's your It's a short period, baby. <laughs> It's a bit yeah. like an internship. La. Yeah, but for unemployed, la, for only for unemployed people. Oh. Yes. <laughs> I have a client who actually started off in the sales in the banking industry. So after that, uh, he found that it's actually quite stagnant. Nah. I don't really like yeah, because chasing, you know, KPIs and all that, right? Mm. So he decided to move on. So he went to become a UAT tester, still within the banking. A what? Sorry. UAT, UAT user acceptance test. Yeah, so they do <laughs> testing of the uh, software the, oh. and all that, la, oh. so systems. But it was a contract role. So they, after that, uh, I think after three years, they converted him to permanent role. And then that's where he felt that, yeah, there's not much progression. So he started to, to come to us for assistance. And then when we actually guided him, um, some skills that he has, he actually is very good in Excel. So, but he didn't take up courses. So he went to took up an advanced Excel course to up, upskill himself. Then after that, he actually went into a business analyst role. Wow. Yeah. Just through Excel Ooh. alone. Yes. Uh, Excel so and also transferable skills. So right. he went to this, uh, I would say it's a technology, but it's a smaller scale uh, company that do okay. business yeah. analysts. But now he transited again. He was being poached yeah. to a bigger healthcare system company. Oh. So that is how he transit merely through um, resume re um, review, means writing, rewriting his transferable skills and also taking up courses. And his mad Excel skills. And he jumped. Oh, hey, he he's so jump. sure what Excel can do, okay? Hey, v look up is hey. amazing. Eh. And yeah. his salary really jumped from the UAT tester to the current role. I think there's about 40%. Yeah. It's really high, yeah. Are there a lot of people who are doing like career switches in the sense that they are moving from one industry to a completely new industry? Yeah, a lot actually, because sometimes when they, or me, perhaps initially when they join that industry, it's perhaps for money. Mm. Yeah, they say that hey, they uh, usually, joining, yeah, yeah, usually, usually for money, right? <laughs> and then when they're joining it for a few years, they realize that actually it's draining me out. It, it doesn't fulfill what I like. Yeah, I don't have the passion for that role. So they start to think about switching. And then mm. um, some of them, they, um, they do a burnout. 
Mm. Yeah, because of that role, they function, they didn't realise until they joined the organisation, they joined the industry and they realised that, yeah, I, I don't suit. I know that I go another industry, another role, I will face the same situation. So they decide to actually do a total switch out. So apart from career coaching, we actually have this job security council initiative whereby we actually work with companies who are willing to hire at-risk workers. So we at actually- At-risk workers. Yeah, at-risk to be displaced workers. Oh. Yeah, so we do really a match them and then provide that kind of job security. And also like, for example, in COVID-19, right, there are a lot of like cabin crews, people in the hospitality sectors that yeah, were being yeah. affected, right? Mm. What we did is actually to put them in healthcare roles. Yeah, so that's one of the efforts that we actually put uh, did during the COVID-19 situation. Do they like end up staying in the healthcare yeah. role after that? Uh, some of them actually, they Ooh, transit. Oh, interesting. You mentioned like at risk, right? This mm. like, I identify myself as at risk or mm. the Job Security <laughs> Council is like, okay, like say for example now it's COVID period. Yeah. Like these groups of people, we identify that they might need help and then we reach out. The companies actually notified us that oh. likely they might want to release the workers. Oh. You know, so they get support from us. Then we will have companies. We work with companies. So you say like recently them. the Lazada, then they can come. Yeah. They're oh. actually working with E2I actually. Oh. Oh. No way. Korean coaches has been actually reaching out to them to provide guidance and support. Huh. If I am someone that is thinking of switching careers and I would yeah. think that a lot of people out there might relate to this, right? How do I know whether I'm just, like, I'm just tired of my role for a moment and I just need the time to recharge, right? Before mm. I continue in my role versus this is not the place for me and I need to go. Yeah, during the career coaching session, we actually asked about the push and pull factors about why ah. you decide, what is the triggering of the situation that leads you to wanting to quit. Then yeah. we need to dive deep into understanding you as a person, what mm. are your strengths, and then the kind of uh, values that you value mm. in the work environment. Then we can find things that within the environment or opportunities out there that you may fit in. Yeah. So what is something that maybe if you identify that, right, then you're like, ah, okay, like this company is not the right fit for you, you need to go. If you are someone who, for example, you really cannot handle fast-paced environment. Yeah. <laughs> no, I read somewhere, right? They say if the job description says fast-paced environment is a yeah. reflect. Oh. Red flag. Oh. Oh. Someone oh. must be willing to roll up their sleeves and do the, <laughs> and do the deep work. Then I'm like, what? Sus, yeah, yeah, sus. Okay, so no, fast-paced then. environment, then you know that you're not someone then, then that, that means there's a gap, right? Mm. Then either you have to adjust or you don't find that kind of company. Yeah. Yeah. So there's two ways. Like, it's also called the work uh, adjustment theory, whereby we actually have to either adjust ourselves or adjust the things that we look for. Yeah. Ah. Mm. I trust anything that has the word theory behind yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> Frameworks. <laughs> but how do you decide when to change yourself or change uh, where your, your environment is? Yeah. How so do I know, am I the problem? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when you have actually tried a few jobs and you realize the problem is consistently there. Yeah, then you might want to reflect and look internally. Is this really the environment or is it something that I have to work on? Yeah. Mm, so it's like if like a guy, then he keep break up with the girl then after a while, then the problem is him, lah, right? Yeah, could be mm. yeah, in that context. Okay, my follow-up to your question just now, right? Mm. Is that, I mean, obviously employers, I would assume are looking for people that can handle at least some form of stress, you know what I mean? Because cannot be like, they're going to get stuff, <laughs> then this person says, sorry, so fast-paced environment, it's not for me, that I go, man. that cannot be the case. So mm. if I know I'm not someone that can so-called handle a fast-paced environment, what is considered fast-paced and in an interview, how do I then package that nicely to, <laughs> to tell my, employ my future employer? I'll take things slow. So like those in project management, those in like handling this, mm. time is very important to them. Mm. Yeah, so that is where fast-paced environments. I see. Yeah, if that is your weakness, but you still have passion for it, right? Yeah. Then I think you have to work on your gaps, definitely. So fast-paced environment, there are things that, uh, if you look deeper, there will be things that, why you cannot handle fast-paced work? Is, is it because you're not organized enough? Or is it because you need some to set certain protocol process in place? Uh -huh. Yeah, or is it because you're not resourceful enough, right? So we really have to identify <laughs> what triggers that unable to work in fast-paced environment. So you all help with that also? We do like, deep dive to understand the gaps. Uh -huh. Yeah, so then we can actually address or think that uh, perhaps this is something that you need to work on. I'm also curious about people who are making lateral moves mm. in the sense of like they are moving from in the same industry but mm. like say I'm a content strategist in this company I'm moving to a content strategist in say another company mm. so are there reasons for moving kind of the same as the reasons for people or people wanting to make like career switches I will say that for lateral moves it's more about salary because they see that, that uh, I see more salary in that and I see more opportunities I want growth 
then they usually move out. Or it could be um, just my current company, if there's a lot of like, it's very toxic. Mm. So it's just pertaining to that organization. Okay. It's not within the industry. So they may want to just move to another company. Yeah. But then how you know the other company not toxic? <laughs> yeah, that is something <laughs> that we will never know until yeah. we are inside, right? Yeah. But there are things that you can actually do la, to actually understand if it's red flag or not. So I, if you have come or if you have friends or networks working in that organization, then you can <laughs> oh, actually. Uh, yeah. <laughs> if not, you can also. Uh, that's a lot of things. Like for example, in the job description, right? Sometimes they say that uh, any other ad hoc duties. Sometimes it could be also a red flag already. <laughs> so what is exactly the other ad hoc duties, right? Or if their job description is very little, you don't know exactly what you're gonna mm. do. Yeah. So there are some of the red flags, and I do hear from clients, right? Uh, the red flags is uh, raised during the interview because the interviewer were very mean were very rude you know mm. very condescending yeah so that's something that you can pick up along the way before uh, you land the role my, my <laughs> experience is like usually they are very nice during the interview mm. but then when you get into the company then suddenly like eh, yeah. true colours like, true colours yeah. yeah. they put their best foot forward for yeah. like that 10 minutes lah Mm. Why my interview only 10 minutes? I think like interviews themselves right, have transformed quite a bit. I mean, last time it's a lot more one way and then mm. now it's really both ways mm. and then like there yeah. are people that say like, okay, like there are questions that you need to be asking mm. during your interview. What are some of those questions that you guys recommend? Yeah, I think the bef- applicants before ask. we uh, go into, we can actually talk about the management styles. Like what is the management styles that uh, you... You, you have for example for and also what are some of the things that you look at for someone to succeed in this current role and another question is you can ask about the culture of the company like what is the culture and the things that uh, the the spirit of the organisation so what's yeah. the answer that you don't want to hear <laughs> <laughs> we are we a are family, family. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> what is the employer's view on job hoppers nowadays I think uh employers view uh, depends as well. So for example, if you are going, especially after COVID, I think most employers are more okay with job hoppers. Oh. Yeah, because a lot of roles are contract and project basis now. Right. Yeah. So the roles themselves oh. have changed. Yeah. So it really depends on the person doing the hiring mm. and the person or the organisation as a whole. How long do I have to stay in the company to consider? <laughs> do I? <have> to? <laughs> as long I as you want. Just like one year. <laughs> if I jump a couple of companies in like say, uh, every one year, I change one company. Mm. Is that considered job hopping? For sure. What do you mean? Mm. But it's, it's a still year. a job hopper, but if you put into a context of relationship, right? So if you are if uh, you have been with someone who has many exes for a few months, then I think that's also something that you want to, you have some race, red flags. Yeah, so race, if right? you're car- someone yeah. that you are currently thinking of dating, uh, they tell you in the past four years, I date four girls. Or one year, one year, one year, one year. Then you're reflecting, ding, 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 really. Yeah. So, you know, uh, think you about hear it. That? Yeah. <laughs> hmm. But where else, if the person say, oh, my last relationship is about two, three years, or maybe seven years, then you start, oh, maybe he's really committed. Yeah. I've seen it in a lot of my peers also that they tend to change jobs very often. Every one year, 1.5 years, then they switch already, right? And I would, I would imagine that during the next interview, hmm. the high chance will get asked about like, hey, how come like, you've switched oh. through so many roles. Mm. How do you tell them? Yeah, so you have to get your narrative right. You have to first understand why <laughs> you want to leave, right? So you cannot always like blame the previous organisation and all that. Right. But I think you can keep it within like yourself, like, oh, because I see certain feet in this organisation, that's why I move towards that. And then when I go in, perhaps there was a mismatch of expectation. That's why I change another role. So keep it within the reasons within yourself. But if I yeah, say that my expectations want. constantly mismatch, then doesn't that scare off the employer? Then that is the time where you need to sit down and reflect. Like, <laughs> what, <laughs> problem, so what do you want in terms of your next role? Yeah. If I think um, what we can do as a job seeker is also to do research. Lah. Definitely have to research on the culture of the organisation and how and what kind of people they usually hire. So this can oh. be using like LinkedIn as a tool. So LinkedIn actually has this um, a tool that you can actually do research on the people working there. So but you have a sensing of like who they really hire, what kind of pattern of people, what kind of characteristics. What, what do you mean of, by pattern? Of? Like how yeah. do I like judge the pattern based you on? You know, their certifications that they had, which schools they are from. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So if you realise that hey, this company actually hires similar background or maybe similar kind of thing, you know that oh, perhaps this is what they are looking for. I think I have seen yeah. like in LinkedIn is like when you see a job listing, they will have kind of like the company profile at right. the bottom and then they will actually say like mm. uh, their hires come from these companies. Mm. So actually, I think that's, a, oh. that's an interesting way that. to like kind of see like where they were from and then maybe are you in the area or are you mm. like... Wow. I saw on TikTok also, it's quite interesting, a setting that I didn't know 
Okay, Aesthetic. background context. I never... Uh, okay, I apply job lah, obviously. But I've never been to like a formal interview. Like, mm. I've never... What? Like, my, <laughs> my resume is kind of... If you go and find, right? It's really like... I, I My part-time jobs, eh. Like, that's where no my resume is... Up, that's why my resume is updated until. Because, mm. I mean, my entire portfolio is online, ma. Mm. And everybody can pretty much see for themselves, <laughs> right? dot com slash the daily catch <laughs> I just send them a link, maybe. No, so, I've never had to like, you know, go on LinkedIn and I like, scour and all that. So, I... But what I hear from my friends, right, is that there's actually a function where you can make your profile, right, visit, uh, sorry, make your profile visible to recruiters especially. Yeah. So it's you special. highlight that and then they teach you like how to format your, what's that called, uh, like your bio mm. such that when recruiters open, right, then immediately they can see like maybe what are your top skill sets, then that kind of thing. Then mm. it puts you in a better position. So. Yeah. so those jobs that you had throughout your career life is mainly through network? Network. Right. You say what it's called? <laughs> <laughs> no, friends, friends, right? Right? I can tell you the brief no, background story that you label for ah, me, okay? okay, okay. <laughs> so I from I internship convert mm. to full time. Mm. Then after that, full time ready, then uh recommended that I come here. That's uh, it. So <laughs> yeah, she's very young, so uh. so so yeah. No, I'm I do, 25. I <laughs> what I wanted to share is also there are certain people or uh, certain situations where they also don't have to apply for roles but be based mainly on referrals and networks. Right. So there's some areas that I think as individual, we need to work on building our network, building our branding. Right. So that uh, actually referrals rate are actually quite high. Yeah, I as see. compared to uh, online job searching, yeah, you know, you go through the proper, uh, the job portals. Actually, okay. what are the kind of the demographics of people who come to you? Is there like a certain subset of people or is it all walks of life that kind of? All walks of life. We actually serve like fresh grads, NS bands. We also serve back to work workers. We serve retrenched workers, uh, mm. gig workers. We also serve uh, mature workers. Oh, yeah, and also those uh, ex-offenders. We are actually very inclusive in terms of serving. Yeah. Mm. And is there like a very common mistake that these people are making that is preventing them from getting a job? I would say lack of self-awareness. Yeah, because every time... Your face really, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then when they come to us, okay, they are not too sure what are their strengths. So usually we'll ask, so what are some of your strengths and weaknesses? Then they will share a lot of their weaknesses, but not their strength. The strength they struggle to think about. I think this is so unique to like Asian countries like Singapore. Mm. Yeah. The imposter like syndrome. It's a, la. Yeah, it's an like, upbringing thing. Eh. You don't want to put your like best foot forward. Is it? Or oh. you're too shy to show that you did No, this. I think we're just a lot more critical of yeah, ourselves. Yeah, very critical. Mm. Yeah, and mm. also the insufficient research. La. So after understanding your, yourself, right, you have to know whether there's enough demands in the market, right? So sometimes there's a bit of mismatches of expectations. They think they can do the job, but they perhaps they have some skill gaps which they are not sure of. Yeah, that's why we actually can also guide them in terms of understanding whether there's any other things they can work on so to make them more employable in their in their job search. Is mm. me taking a skills future course, right? Mm. Like say I want to explore another industry and then, okay, I go skills future, I find someone who's teaching a three week course on this and then I get the certificate. Is that enough? Is that considered enough upskilling? So it also depends on the role, right? So if that role is very technical, definitely you have to go for more courses. You have to take longer courses. But if you're saying a uh, simple or less technical role like administration and all that, then you don't have to go to a longer course. But comparing yourself who go for courses versus someone who has not been going for courses for the past 20 years, then you are at a better age. Yeah. Mm, when employer, better than nothing. Better than, than nothing. And employers do value someone who are upskilling. Self-starter. Yeah, self-starter, uh. willing to learn, take up you know, their responsibility to go and upskill themselves. Mm. On the note of like strengths, right? Is there a specific hard skill or a specific soft skill that you think right, employers are starting to look out for more? Uh, okay, uh, based on the skills future the, uh, mm. report, right? Business management, data management, production, operation management. This is soft yeah. skills. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, it's just soft skills. <laughs> you lost me at data management. Okay, so these are Excel. transferable skills that you can actually move on. Yeah, you can use this to transfer into another organization. Mm. So there are also other critical core skills, like uh, the top ones are like problem solving skills, communication skills, collaboration skills, creative skills. Yeah, so these are the areas that uh, employers are actually looking out for in terms of uh, individual. Are there yeah. causes for soft skills? Yeah, there are causes. Oh. Yeah. Because so in my head, I always thought it was... 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> huh? Like what's the curriculum? Skills. Communication is not just about talking, it's also about listening. Uh, yeah, whether right. we can actually articulate uh, what we have thoughts and then whether we are listening to the other party. Yeah. So if there's no miscommunication, you don't get that often, right? Then I think you're on the good track of a good communication skills. So it's not that the mm. sender, but it's also the receiving. Yeah. La. Yeah. Okay, I think we are fine, right? All of us can put in our... No, and what people don't realise, <laughs> right, is the ability to communicate to different people in different ways is important. Oh, yeah. 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 Because even of, like, if it's like in a team, right, like the way that each of your team members need to receive information is also different. Mm. So the ability to adapt that, I think, makes you yeah, a good communicator. Styles. Yeah, Yeah. so some of us, like, we are more visual. Some of us, we are more auditory, right. right? So the way that we present information when we communicate is also important. Like some people, I need to shout, right? Yeah. Emphasis. <laughs> 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 yeah, you need to highlight and you need to emphasize. I think right. some people need that. Yeah. Right. Mm. right. At what okay. point, right, do I consider this enough of a skill, right, to put inside yeah. my resume? For yeah. resume, <laughs> it's just the first level screening. So you have to get past the first level screening before. So you I go write to anything the that gets me there. No, write Lie. anything that you you can do. <laughs> I can do. <laughs> you can do, and you have things to share that uh, your value and your contribution. Yeah. And your achievements. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the devil's workshop. Is I have creative skills for sure. <laughs> so sometimes they are just very focused on one thing. Like for example, uh. I want to be a data analyst, analyst, right? The next job, uh, after I upskill, the next job must be a data analyst. Uh. But it doesn't work that way sometimes. Mm. You have to do a, a bit of lateral moves. Do something mm. else first that may need data analytics um, skills, but may not be an analytics role, right? Mm. To get to that role. Eventually, oh. so we may be we may be stacking up our skill sets before we land to that role. Eventually, I always think that oh, mm. like HR is a is a something that I want to explore as a career. But then I always see like I have my degree, my work experience has nothing mm. to do with HR, and I've actually like sent out like uh, uh, job applications to mm. HR companies, and I don't even get like a callback or anything. So like yeah. I, it's like I all, all I can say is you're good with people. Yeah. Communication skills. <laughs> right, right, right. Like yeah. people are, are, are the core of like what I want to work with. Mm. And then like, and if you give me the chance, I will do mm. my level best. So in HR, doesn't mean it's just HRO. So you have to look into perhaps recruitment. Recruitment could be something related. It's still about recruiting people, right? Mm. Hiring people, interviewing people. Mm. So these are the skill sets. And entry to recruitment is much easier. So oh. there's a CI test that you can take up and then you can join a recruitment then to gain that kind of relevant skill sets that a HR will also look into. Mm. So another role is, for example, coaching. Career coaching is also another step that you can actually take up first. Mm. Yeah, closer. Then you will be maybe closer to HR. Yeah, so there are a lot of such incidences where but we are just too focused on one role, but mm. there's actually a lot of transferable skills that we have that we can move on to similar roles out there. Mm. First, mm. The first, build the bridge. Yeah. La, build the bridge. You stack up you your experience and skills, mm. then you move directly to the, uh, the that goal that you have in mind. Interesting. Yeah. Honestly, that could be a great answer, right? If the mm. company that you are interviewing for is your the final form, like that's your, the destination you've yeah. been trying to get to, right? Then they ask you why you hop so many jobs. Then you say like, because like, I've been trying to like gather all the different okay. skills, right? To come just here, to, right? Just to be, yeah. 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 Just to be an asset to your yeah. company. Yeah. Okay, so to just round out this conversation, right? Uh, I think we'll just go back to the job market in 2024. So mm. for people who are looking for a job, right? Mm. What are some industries that they should be looking at? These industries are actually the care, green and digital. So care, uh, yeah, green care, green and, and digital. digital. The green is more of a uh, sustainability Oh. Yeah, care is more of like healthcare, social service, uh, education. Healthcare yeah. always in demand. Yeah. Always. Yeah. <laughs> they, yeah. they accepted me. Uh. <laughs> They're and, desperate. Yeah. And digital <laughs> as well. Yeah, digital will still be, I, I mean, it will still be part of us. We cannot yeah, push it off. It will still be transforming. Yeah. So that is also um, how the whole nation will still progress towards that. Like. Really? Uh, mm, I thought yeah. I heard like, I don't know how I read Reddit or everything or like even in Channel News Asia or that kind of <laughs> mm. news, right? It's like always like, oh, uh, this company laid off mm. uh, 20% of their uh, yeah. workforce, that kind of thing. And it's not just one tech company, right? Mm. But it's like multiple. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so majority of the tech companies that are retrenching now, it could be over hiring during the COVID-19 mm. period. Mm. Retrenchment now doesn't show the full representative of the tech industry. Right. If you take a look at the job portals, right? There's actually a lot of tech jobs out there as well, currently. Yeah. Right. Uh, generative mm. AI is still the thing. Mm. And there's also a lot of uh, cybersecurity. Oh, yeah. okay, okay, okay. Mm. So these are all the things that you can actually look out for in terms of the, the outlook. Actually, on the topic of like mm. AI, right? Mm. Like, are there any 
do you see foresee any jobs like being in danger of uh, mm. being like replaced may, by AI? Yeah. Mm. Those which are more repetitive roles or more uh, manual labor kind, they will be taken over by automation. But they always say know? like AI create yeah. more jobs. Like say for example, right, yeah. ChatGPT come out, then yeah. everybody's like, wow, now all the copywriters no more job already. But then oh, now there's a whole new job, right, where you can be a prompt right. engineer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so at the same time, it evolves, it evolves yeah. and more mm. jobs are being created at the same time. Right. So AI is actually, we should view it as a tool to complement our job. Right. Not as a threat. Yeah. Right. I'm curious, right? Like no. you say, for example, I mean, you've mentioned these three areas, right? But say I don't really, like I'm not into healthcare or like I don't care about environment. <laughs> so not sustainable, not green. Then digital, I don't really want to go into tech. Like I'm not into maybe coding or whatever, right? What are some peripheral roles that people mm. can actually take on, but still in these industries? that they actually don't realise are existing roles or are av available to them. Mm. It could be a general role as a project management mm. or a general role as an administration. You don't right. have to be that in that, that function. I don't need right? to be a coder. Yeah, like, yeah, I you go don't to have to digital. be a coder. Yeah. But it's just that in general, this industry, these companies within the industries are, will be growing. Mm. Yeah. Is 2024 a good time to change jobs? I mean, mm, like okay. looking at the market. La. I think today we have talked about a lot of factors that you have to consider before. So we, I can um, sum it up in terms of four different S. Okay, so the first S is about situation. <laughs> <laughs> Why? You don't like S? Why you don't like I love S. Okay, yeah, let's go. Give me four S's. <laughs> four S's. La. So understand the situation that you're in, the trigger for that, that push, you know, to do a switch. Then um, for the other S is self, whether you have that readiness in you, whether you have done the research and then whether you have that kind of uh, readiness to take on uh, new causes, upskilling. The next S is uh, the support, whether you have the right support or your spouse's family, whether they are part of it. You know, when you change out, you have to get some sensing whether they are okay with it because a lot of times it's when we do career, it also affect one another in terms of family nucleus. Mm. So the last S is the strategies, whether you already plan out certain strategies to perhaps upskill or change job, have you updated your resume? So you already have place, things in place, then I think it's uh, you're already ready, then you can go for it. Mm. Yeah. Something that's also helpful that I've noticed is that I think there are a lot of roles, right, that it's actually something that you like, but you don't know that that role is doing that. For example, <coughs> <laughs> I'll power through it. Yes, for example, yeah. I don't know how long you're going when, I, when you think of like product manager, I think what people imagine versus what a product manager actually does, right, is quite different. Mm. And so- Yeah, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> so there are a lot of roles, right, that I think you don't realize what these roles are for actually doing or mm. that actually are a good fit for you, which is where mm. a career coach can also come yeah. because they know all of these. Right. All right, and that's it for today. This episode was brought to you by NTUC's Employment and Employability Institute. And for more information on how they can help you navigate your career, you can head on over to the links below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Thank you, Vivian. Thank you for having me. Oh, yes, thank you, Vivian. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I need some coaching in my communication yeah. skills. <laughs> If I want to go see a career coach, must I do it in person? Oh, no, no, it has to be in person, but we have virtual video coaching and also uh, phone options. Can yeah. I go in place of my parents? No, no. Oh, because I'm right, so, so. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, hear me out. They don't understand career coaching and uh, they don't understand why we need uh, these people. Mm. Oh, you got like group yeah. therapy, like family group, group therapy. therapy. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but the session, usually we will just serve one-to-one. -one. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, so you, you see you outside. Wait outside. Yeah, you wait outside. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you. I see, I see.